Malaris Cinder was dead. But with her death, she unveiled her final move. Ever since she had come to know young Valerian, she had realised his skills and his ability. She knew he would make a good king, and she knew that she had denied him that birthright. And so with her final act, she would make up for such a misdeed. Only a day after she was deceased, with her so-called air bathen still busy in marine, unaware of her passing, an emergency meeting at the Queen's Council was called to reveal a change in the will. Milaris, while still granting away her title, had granted Illyria itself, not the man that the many lords and nobles of the Empire had declared their king, but to Valerian, the forgotten grandson. She named him as the ruler of the Lord Paramountcy of North Illyria and granted him the Isle of Illyria itself, essentially naming the young boy as, in all ways but literally, the true king of Illyria. And while possessing the Isle itself, he felt no point in denying that fact. He held the strongest element of all. He was there, in Illyria, not on the other side of Slaver's Bay, in another castle. That night, the people of Illyria were called to Majesty's Keep to witness a mighty coronation. Before the realm, and named by the former hand of the Queen, Valerian was named the King of North Illyria. When the news reached Marine, it became clear to Bathina what this was. It was a declaration of war. They'd crowned a pauper, a fraud, before he'd even received word of Malaris' death. He'd been robbed of the Great Council's award, and he would not stand idly by. On the back of the mighty beast Quicksilver, one of the oldest and strongest dragons standing, he took to the skies in pure anger. Some say he flew around Marine, trying to burn the clouds themselves. Quicksilver eventually toppling one of the towers of the pyramid out of sheer rage. He was inconsolable, as he once more flew from the skies, this time trying to secure allies. Valerian had declared war. Now, it was time to draw the lines. The first move was made by Valerian. He knew he would need numbers, for his dragons were young and weak, and the only way they would stand a chance was to outnumber him in the skies and the fields. As such, he made a decree. Tolos and Bantaris, ancient ancestral lands of the Cinders, would be reclaimed by them. He knew he'd have little struggle in reclaiming them. The Lord of Tolos was but a boy, one too young to defend himself, and without any elder of his family to speak against this. He was given some small barony of his own to grow up in, oust from the castle by the new named king. It was undoubtedly an unpopular move, but not unpopular enough to ruin his support. At least, not yet. All eyes turned to Volantis. If Bathan had hoped that the uncle Balerion would be seeking the throne himself, splitting the sides, he was wrong. In his age and maturity, Balerion had come to love his holding of Volantis, and more than that, he had come to love his dear daughter. He chose not to threaten their lives, but knew he had an honour to fulfil. His mother had given Illyria to Valerian for a reason, and Valerian did love his dear mother, so he would agree to her wish. He rose his armies and rode towards Majesty's Keeper, back his mighty dragon, and with his wife at his side. The first, and perhaps the most major, power had made his loyalties clear. Astapor was a large unknown. The Lord of Astapor was married to Valerian's mother and had been in contact with the boy for quite some time, yet... He had also recently declared her mother an adulterer, a whore, a murderer, and a decree that she'd be thrown in prison to repent for her actions. This made a large question of if he'd still hold any ties with young Valerian. Yet when Bainford's men arrived in the city on Dragonback, the gates would not open to them, nor would they agree for parley. The Lord of Astapor had been given a promise by the Lord of Valyria, a promise of future titles and wealth and that he would allow the Lord to divorce his mother, with his blessing, and find a new bride. There was no doubt it upset Valerian's mother, it felt like a betrayal, but he was trying to win a war here. He couldn't let small details distract him. His mother hadn't seen him in quite some time, why should he care for her opinion? With that, Astapor was secured, but Astapor had not yet brought any of his armies to rise. Valerian hoped he would honour his side of the agreement as the days to battle drew nearer. 
Nugis made their stance very, very clear. The only nuns in the family, they had no ties to either side, and as such, they had refused a letter sent for them calling for aid. He'd even barred the envoys of Valerian into his city, keeping his aisle clear of such combat. He stated only that Nugis shall not burn because the family of Cinder wishes to fight once more. When dragons fight, the people suffer most. Valerian felt he could sit happy with this news, but Bathan could not. It meant that no Lord Paramount would stand with him. He had only Marine and the lands of Long Summer, but beyond that, he stood alone. Yet he did not fear, no. He was mature. He was smarter. A finer tactician and swordsman. But more than that, Bathan rode upon the back of the mightiest dragon in the realm by far. He rode upon Quicksilver, who would cut through Ifelix and the young, weak dragons of Illyria with absolute ease. Beyond the Black Beast Ifelix, they had no dragon, even of the age of 40, while well, his was over a century in age. He feared nothing from them. I shall not wait for them to come to me. I shall set North Illyria ablaze if need be. I will not be denied my right. Bathan spoke in a booming tone across his hall, before a sudden cough escaped his lips, as he looked to see blood there upon his palm. For a moment there grew a hesitation, until they looked to see young Alex sitting upon the floor of the great hall, staring up at his father with wonder and pride. Bathan closed his bloody fist and looked down upon his boy. I shall win my throne back, my son for you. Hello guys and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, the game of thrones, where we are playing as Lord Paramount Valerian of North Valeria. We are an interesting sort, we are craven, but we are also honourable and wrathful. We are uh, quick of the mind, even though we have our hair lip. And we are playing as him because he was been granted Illyria in the will, and I think it makes sense to continue the story of Illyria above all else. Promise we are going to be losing money. Money's going to be a big problem here. So I think immediately before I start anything, by the way, I'm just going to sell some slaves so that we can afford this war. We have Volantis on our side. Astapor has declared for us, but he has not yet risen his armies, as he is technically married to my mother even though he has my mother in prison. So, that is... certainly something, isn't it? <laughs> and Nugis is neutral from what I've seen, which means that they could join either side at any time and they're completely unpredictable. Numbers! The numbers are on our side, but it doesn't matter because he has Quicksilver. Ifelix is currently not claimed which means I can call for Dragon Riders, but there is a chance, and as, as I've learned because this game is a finicky mess, there is a chance he will actually be stolen by someone else regardless of what I do. We're going to get an army to protect this one because we're going to go join over and join our Yunkai troops. Because, you know, we were formerly the Lord of Yunkai, so our main forces are there. And Ifelix has been claimed by Neris who is mine, and now I need to make her a commander. Um, am I able to fire a commander, or or what? Yeah, I'd have to... Um, relieve him as a commander. And now appoint that woman as a commander, because it's such a strange system. I, I wish... Somebody mentioned that, oh, you could use a law to make him do this, but actually you can't. Also, what? Ifelix isn't being ridden? Okay, no, there she is. I was going to say. Uh, point her as a commander, and we're going to get her leading my main army. Uh, Tarisha. We'll replace Rhaegol, actually, because Rhaegol's the only one without a dragon. My brother has no dragon. Nera sucks, but she has Ifelix, and we need Ifelix if we have even a chance here against Quicksilver. Uh, let's get the ships up here. It's still not enough. That's a bit worrying. A little more ships then. Get these ships over here. 
I think we may have to go straight in for an early battle. No, wait, it's still not actually enough. Is it actually not enough? It's still not enough? Are you kidding me? Uh, well, I'll tell you the rest, we didn't even raise these local liege levies. Let's get these army together. And then these, will, these two armies that are approaching now, this 6k, will remain here as a defensive front while we wait for Volantis to arrive. But we need to m match up with this 9k army and march with Astapor together. Bathan is not leading any of his armies right now by the looks of it. So Bathan has our Valyrian Steel Sword. He has all of the items, and so is what left to him. But he has not been crowned. Okay, he's not leading this army. He's not been crowned because he never had the chance to be crowned because we essentially took that opportunity from him. Now we're going to go into No Man's Land. We're going to have to go around to meet him there. Oh, and they're going to get wiped because there's a dragon in that army. Battle of Antares is a defeat. Oh, because these armies are getting wiped. Oh, oh dear. These armies are just going to retreat as far as they can. i bring you into covering marine. News from Melk, my lord. During the war in Azapor, the dragon rides of Lady Helena Sin, a rider of Galax, and a rider of Vedagon met in fierce battle. Lord Magor and Vedagon killed Galax. They all Vedagon won? Oh my goodness. Magor, what an impressive victory. I mean, they lost the battle. But they just killed another one! But Dagon also just killed Salochon. Just killed two significantly older dragons than himself. And this army should have no dragons left, basically. Which is why he's fleeing, probably. But I think we'll be able to catch him in Yunkai. Yeah, you're gonna get wiped here, Uncle. My uncle does have a dragon, but I don't think it's going to do any work here. I don't think Aaron can stand up against Quicksilver. Oh, and he's been captured and taken to Marine. Yes, because Aaron has been slain. He met in fierce combat and Aaron was slain and my uncle's been captured. He's being held in Marine. We're going to have to take back Marine then. Wipe, wipe this army and let's take Marine. Running over the plains, I see a group of people. All my men are dead. How are any of my men dead? Why was I so confused? I mean, I'm an awful com combat combatant. I guess that may have just been a um. Oh god, he's burning Mantaris to the ground. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. There's gonna be a lot of damage from here. Lady Sayan and her allies struggled to compete with her dragon strength, so she's the rider of Capaxes. And Xantus has been unfortunately wounded. Lady Sayan and her allies struggled to compete with your dragon's relentless attack, several times fallen from the sky. Now they're at the mercy and we dive in for the kill. You pick out Capaxes and judge that he, he and his rider could be finished off. You and Xantus, who is injured but victorious. Right, headlong into them, send him crashing into the ground while your dragon tears him apart. They are left dazed with Capaxi's lifeless core spreads across the ground. Our names shall live as legend. We are going to need to burn Marine, I think. We want any chance here. Yeah? Don't know where his armies are. He's basically doing guerrilla warfare. Yeah, he's just moving around Tolos and Antares, which does make some sense. Because these lands have a lot of troops, and it makes sense to try and take them. But again, all these wars we've been having is a lot of the reason why we... Oh, wonderful. That was a very quick recovery. It's why we are somewhat struggling with building. Yeah, because look at this. We're just burning our own lands in dragonflies. And then Tolos has just lost a significant amount of stuff. I'm going to spend a lot of money to fix what he's just done to Tolos. But it's going to happen time and time again, unless we find a way to stop this infighting. We need to have a long... like. Who, no matter who wins this, we need to have a long-living ruler with direct heirs. Look at this, he's doing it again! Stop burning Mantaris, you dickhead. I'm losing a lot of people on, um, on doing this battle. I think 
we might retreat from this battle. No, we'll take it. Take the next level. Just keep going for a bit, and then we're going to retreat and return back to. Yeah, he's just going to keep burning Tolos. Okay, we're no longer taking attrition. But after this, I think we need to flee from here and get to Illyria and spend some time building back up our mate Volon. Unless he's going to try and take the battle to us, which if he's doing so, that's going to be a big problem. Can we sail these in? Yes, we can. On. He's going to catch us if we don't just win this siege now. What is going on? Come on! And that's going to stall us even more. Okay, he, no, he's focusing on Borash. Okay. We're going to retreat and spend some time in Illyria. Or maybe we go to Tolos, because that's where our... No, we're going to go to Illyria. If he gets attacked, we'll send him troops. But right now, my uncle's remaining forces are going to help in this. Because my uncle himself is still... No, they killed him! He died in the dungeon, so now it's Malaris, my uh, cousin, who's having to rule here. We're losing more, and it's, it's getting ridiculous how much damage Tolos has taken. Spend some time here, and we should get our numbers back up. Okay, Tolos is resecured. We have a full army back in. Why can I not raise local levies? Oh, because they're in the main army. Okay. That's just what it's saying. Um, let's see if we can get... Training troops in the capital again. Fine, I'll give them gold because I do have a lot of raised levies in this war. He's sieging down Melior March. Where is Bathan? He's in hiding! You have the largest dragon in the war, why are you in hiding? This just seems a, a bit of a fool's errand going into hiding when this, this war could be won for him. Where are they going? This is Empress Jahira's army, so the, his wife. No? Who's Empress Jahira? Is it his daughter? Oh, one of his secondary wives? Yeah, Lady Janeira, here it is. And I've had a daughter. Okay, if he's going past Tolos to Mantaros, we're going to land in Mantaros to aid in Medial March. Yep. Okay. Unless I think I can land directly in Melior March, but I don't think that's going to work. Unless we land behind him in Tolos. Oh, I landed into him in Tolos, but I think we'll still get the victory here. Because if Ifelix... Beautiful, huge damage in that battle because of Ifelix. I made a mistake, but Ifelix made up for it. Bathan could have won that battle, but he's in hiding rather than fighting. If Quicksilver's there, he's going to turn the tide. And now that the now Marine's being raided, it's going to have to be relieved by uh, Astapori troops. She rides Quicksilver. Did he? He died. He died a natural death at the age of fifty-nine. My goodness, so he lost Quicksilver. Now Alix rides upon it. Well, who who now rides Quicksilver? I assume it's someone in his court. Quicksilver is now ridden by uh, Laessa. So it's still ridden in one of their armies at least. But I think this war should be ours, surely. This 13k seems to be all they have left. Yes, it's, it, that's about their whole army. And then a 3k over here that's raiding. But I don't think that army's going to do anything. A good work in Melior March. He doesn't, have, he doesn't even have enough men to unseed Marine is, is his problem. 
They're even fleeing Jados. They're just fleeing further and further south. I can't believe... I really thought Bathan would be able to fight as an orb. At the age of 59, he's dead of natural causes. That is... It's surprising, no doubt. I, I really thought he would be able to... I don't know, withstand a bit longer. Estin Flowers has escaped. You bastard. I'll pay this old man's tab to see if he's going to be able to train me. Uh, let's try and catch Mendragonis, rather than the other way around. Okay, apparently 700 troops is all you need to be able to un-siege the first couple levels of Marine. The Isle of Sed has just been completely neutral in this war, it seems like. I've never seen any of his troops do anything. Oh. Okay, yes, we got the poor fighter. The drunk man knows what he's doing. Now. We're going to go into Mantaras. We're going to wait for... Valantis here. And I need to decide, do we want to fight in Draconis? We know Quicksilver is in this battle. Because Princess Leia is, is leading it and she is Quicksilver's rider. Marine is all we need, really. If we keep taking Marine... I mean, they're literally led by a child. Even if they win this war, what is this child going to do? Like, he... Or if he needs to lose this war, this child is not going to be able to rule. He's going to be taken over and conquered and beat. But I don't think we can let this war rest without with, while Quicksilver still lives. Because that mother is basically the boy's regent. So we need to take out, out Quicksilver. She's going to run, but we'll capture a new Valessa, almost certainly. No way she has the speed. Oh, dear. He died of severe stress. But thankfully his son is continuing his commitment uh, to us, which is really helpful for us. I guess it's probably because we're the leaders in the war and we're quite victorious. We're losing percentage because they just took back a bit of Marine, though. Did she... We didn't get the battle to trigger? Lady Lyessa was in that battle, right? It said she was. It was her army. Um. Interesting. So I guess maybe the dragon wasn't there? Oh, and Rhaenys is pregnant. Could have a second child here. But we've already defeated their main army. I guess we'll just unsiege. In fact, we don't even really need to unsiege Draconis because it's not an important province. We just need to uh, take out this army and uh, finish sieging North Illyria. Or, uh, pff, not North Illyria, Marine. Well, oh, super important I know about Lord Margus of Yaros. Why didn't he side with me at the stars? Technically, was my vassal. Uh, let's. Why is Tosha not in this? She literally has Fafnar. Looks like they're fleeing to Volantis. I swear that the dragon has to be in that army, surely. Anywhere else would Quicksilver be? Look through the courts and then. The Quicksilver. Oh, Quicksilver's in Marine. Ah, but. We've captured the. Per We've captured him! Just by riding into Marine. I suppose there's no more point in fighting. Well, Quicksilver still lives, but. This war is over. There's no way they can keep fighting. I mean, as soon as Bathan died, this war was over, if we're being honest. Like, Aria is the regent here. You know, she probably, with her depression, doesn't want to keep fighting the war. Bathan dying, releasing Quicksilver, and Quicksilver then not being able to consistently be in fights. And in fact, he wasn't in fights for so long. He himself was hiding. He really, he really could have won this if... And do I get the full treasury? I do. Including dragonborn bracelets. I didn't know we had these. A pair of bracelets made from fine dragon bone. Dragon bone is used to make many items of value. That's good. What about the Valyrian steel? Did I not get... Oh no, he has the Valyrian steel. 
he's not going to keep the Valyrian steel. Hmm. The boy. He is a threat if I keep him alive because of Bayford's claim. But he's 12. I don't know, would I be... I was in his exact situation. Well, not his exact situation. Sorry, Valar was in his situation. And Val that's what led to Valar's situation. And Valar's line died out. Leave him be. Anria, you can be left be. I think you need to judge his family fairly. We have realm unrest, which makes a lot of sense. Princess Rael? Um, she should be released. Princess Liaza, the rider of Quicksilver, she has to be killed. We cannot have her living after what she's done. Okay, we will feed her to my dragon. Princess Jahiris, he is the uncle? Yes, he is the boy's uncle. He should be released. Diela, God, she's been through enough. Oh, and she's my mo she's my mother in law. Oh yeah, absolutely release her. Prince Maris, his wife was uh fed to Emperor Valerian's dragon. So he's so, yeah, he's Laius's wife. Um, he will release him. Hopefully he'll forget that I killed his wife. <laughs> uh, Viscera. Also released. Araya will be thrown in a dungeon. Vagon released. And Ray released. Orion. I think the basically the rest of them should be released. Yeah. But, so the only question will be for the boy himself. I think he should be released. But I am going to ask for the Valyrian Steel Sword back. And I am going to get the Valyrian Steel Sword back. But I can seize the Chim... What can I not do? One of these must be true. Chimera was stolen from me. I have an ancestral claim on it, or it's an heirloom of my realm. Well, I want a Valyrian steel sword. How do I not have a bloodline claim on it? Because it is... It was Rhaegar's sword. And I'm a descendant... I'm a closer descendant of Rhaegar, really. Interesting. What we're going to do is I'm going to fix up the realm a bit in save edits regardless because we're going to need to fix up the realm a bit in save edits. And... We'll be right back to celebrate the victory of our great lord. Okay, took a little maneuvering, but we have released him in return for him granting us Chimera, the family blade. I mean, we could, looking at the, the history of Chimera is interesting, because Valar had it for a time, obviously. Meliris took it, then Bathan took it. Alex held it for such a short amount of time. Alex is married or betrothed to Rey, his sister. So, there is a chance that Marine can sort of recover from all this. Of course, that's going to show up because my daughter is my heir. It's such a good chance to give her, well, I think thrift makes up sense. But my wife is pregnant, I believe. And that's my mother. My wife is pregnant. Uh, yes, she is. So, there's a chance for, uh, for a son. Let's wipe these armies and then the war should be done. These ships can go down as well. Go. And I have to decide a new council because we are now the Emperor. What I will do is I will do an agreement that I had with my brother for his loyalty, and we shall grant him the Kingdom of Yunkai. Don't know what's going on with Slavers right here. I guess it's because they're at war that they're independent. But uh, hopefully they'll come back. Because we, I think we had quite a few 
unexpected and I'd say quite sad losses. Losing our uncle is is going to be very tough to deal with. He was a larger than life personality, and despite the cruelness and you know pushing for his own titles, in the end he did stand with us. Rhaegar tried to catch a dragon quick, so it failed. Can I face the dragon? No, I have a dragon, don't I? Yeah, I have a uh, Byzantis. He's 15 now. Oh, Rhaegal does ride a dragon. He rides uh, Elifnos to battle. What happened to the dragon egg? Did I get the dragon egg? No, the dragon egg's just kind of gone. Interesting. He promises not to conspire against me. We can see the Realm Prosper. I have five children. I think we're going to go see the Realm Prosper, and then if we're successful in seeing the Realm Prosper, we'll try and go for the Have Five Kids one. Sure, I'll take you. You're decent learning. What I do want to do is I keep forgetting to take this guy's title away. Oh, they will eventually need to do that. You wish to betroth me matrilineally? That is interesting. I think that that would work though, wouldn't it? Because my primary wife, children through her would be... Yeah, okay. I think this works because any child through Rainies would still be, you know, priority. And then if she has a male heir, then there's no problem at all. And she just did a Magor Cinder. I'm going to keep that name because that's awesome. And once again, he's kept the hair lip. The hair lip is the only genetic trait apparently I've ever been able to keep. And then we're going to lit the army. Finally, stand down and go back home. So he owns these lands, which I'm going to let him keep for now, but I am going to fix those and save edits, because it doesn't make sense to me that he would have direct ownership of these lands. I think that's just something I missed, basically. So we will reclaim Melior March and all of this. My uncle has claimed Quicksilver, the Empress, uh, the husband of Empress Mary, Lord Regal. Request that Lord Aaron Cinder for this guy. Um, sure. It technically makes sense. I'll deal with you later eventually. Don't worry about it. <laughs> now, let's get to my council. My chief general shall be... Uh, Taisha. My aunt... Who, of course, has her dragon. Oh, and has a dragon egg! Looks like Faf uh, Fafnar's laid an egg. Well, Fafnar's proved to be quite the incredible dragon, so that could be a very good egg. Oh. Okay, they're retreating, that's fine. The big problem is I'm going to need to take out loans to fix Tolos, because he's done massive damage to Tolos. I'm going to try and get the castle town back, at least. And then I'm going to take out loans to repair a lot of the damage that was done there. I was, As I said, I did want to save up. One of the things we are going to do is we're going to save up to upgrade Illyria. Or I could get... I actually could... It's only 6,000, so I could get a loan for it. I say only 6,000. 6,000, 6,000, but I could get a loan for it. It's just... We've already been in so many loans. I don't know if it's wise to get into another loan so soon. Train troops in the capital. Uh, fabricate claims. Let's improve diplomatic relations. Oh, no, statecraft. We need statecraft done. Oversee the realm. Oh, you're a way better court physician. And you're a much better... I don't care what they think. You can collect taxes in an area too. Should get our profits up a bit. There's not going to be much profit in Marine for a while, you'd think. They're going to take a long time to get their levies back. Oh, I've collected Apple tax revenue in Illyria. Excellent work. Lord Elos still doing his work. Elos of um, Aminion. Really can't pronounce that. Regnar is a lot easier. And he's got a Valyrian steel sword, so that makes him, in my opinion, cooler. 
Ever since the Battle of No Man's Land, I found it hard to be near my children, for fear of being sent away again. I can't stand the thought of, lo of us losing each other, and this distance is better. Sure, it's better, so I could gain drunkard and maybe gain cynical, gain depressed, gain celibate, or gain stressed. I think we're going to gain stress and then hope it doesn't kill us, because unfortunately it's been killing a lot of people lately. How is Prosperity in Illyria doing? It's actually doing quite bad. I might do a summer fair. Try and get the Prosperity back up after all that's happened. People conspiring to kill me? Do I know this plot? Well, let's just all just stop plots for a bit. I just see a Targaryen. Oh yes, I forgot we have a Targaryen in our ranks. And he has a Valyrian too. Is that? It's Blackfire. Wow. That is interesting. I didn't realize Blackfire would still be around. But who would want to kill me? That's a worry. Fire catcher. Oh, Meraxes kid. Maraxi is being ridden by this dude. That doesn't look like things are going well in uh, Slaver's Road here. Father, father calls her up on my arm, pleading with me to play with her. Ah, uh, and I'm neglecting her because I'm depressed. Rhea rides Quicksilver into battle. Ubalesa. It's always Ubalesa. I think Ubalesa... Aren't they led by... Yeah, his wife is, is Rolenio. Who has um, our other family blade, Majesty? Interesting. By Unsullied. What does that actually do? I think it just gives you a good commander slay, so it's not that good. It's good! Or it's okay, I guess it is, is more my phrase, but it's not that good. What are you doing, brother? You're on a speed run to make people hate you. So this guy has a claim on me, does he? Interesting. Let's see how that goes for him. Apparently, this humbles the Lordship of Mantaris. This greed does not become you. It's my land. And all shall know it. There's a plot to kill me. Okay, the plot's been ended. I start to grow worried. The raid patrol posts and the private farms. Spend what we can when we get it. We need to get Tolos and Antares back up. Where have they landed? Let's just quickly use my brother's army to go take care of them. Rainey's is, is pregnant, which is it's interesting. I guess I'm not distant from her. I'm just distant with literally everyone else in my entire family. Does my daughter have a hair lip? No, she doesn't. Just drive them from Marine. Me now actually being a good combatant because of Chimera. Okay, let's set our armies back down. Oh, another prisoner making another demand of me. I'll be merciful. 
I want to have a long and a prosperous reign. Okay, that's the important thing here. Oh, and he's done my tyranny a bit. I think I still won't have enough. Oh no, I will have some demon size. I said I won't have enough demon size to hold these, but no, I'll be able to have enough to hold these two. The port of size I may have to give away. It did actually upgrade after Malaris died, so that is good news. So under the, I suppose, quote unquote, tutelage of um, the boy. Uh, Alex. Well, I suppose probably Bathan is the one who did it. Bathan did pay to get it upgraded to an advanced colony. So it's a lot more manageable. But I think Melio March and Subclos we'll retake for ourselves. Or maybe we just take Melio March to take both castles? We could also do that. It probably is better to take Subclos though. And then we'll grant Port of Size to someone. There's a lot of managing to be done between episodes. A lot of managing to be done. And any children we have with Malaris will be born into her union rather than mine. That's okay, as I'm apparently all quite virile by the looks of it. Job well done. Named it Mayris. We have Mayris, Jahira, and Magor. Stuff. Let's check in with Gis. So Gis remained completely out of the entire war, which is... Quite interesting. They have a de jure empire, but I'm, as I say, I'm not sure what it takes across it. But no, we can actually just create it now. We can actually ha hold our um, second empire. I'm now a dual emperor. That would be a great. So I'm the emperor of Lord Valeria of no Emperor of North Valeria and the Empire of Giscar. Now that's quite a title. Honestly, maybe I need a new title because you know I'm almost the emperor Emperor of Slavers Bay. Of many things. And if we're going to start... I imagine, depending on how long Valerian lives... If Valerian lives long enough, we're going to be pushing into Oros. And then possibly onto the Isles themselves. Because there is a kingdom here. There's the uh, Kingdom of Long Summer. Which we can't create because we don't have Oros, Davos, and Yidos. Which is fine. But we're pushing down more and more. We are, we are really reclaiming Valeria. Uh, shouldn't need to shut the gates. Oh, a slave revolt. What's this? Oh, Ingus. Um, 6,000 men, 6,000 men, 2,000 men. How much would Astapult raise? Be probably not a lot. Let's raise in Yunkai. Uh, Regal can lead this army. With Neris and I should be we need but why have all my commanders gone? Let's reappoint let's get the Lara of Astapor and Is it the only dragon rise we have? Yeah, okay. Then we'll get uh the Lord of Mantaris and the Isle of Setters as well. And this one will put Allah on the other army. Let's take care of this slave revolt. A greater castle town. I think looking in the area next. We now have the modest estates. And to upgrade those, you need Stewart's Tower 3. Which I'd imagine is another guard station upgrade. So I, basically, it's just these two over and over again appears to be the loop. Which is not a bad loop. It's a pretty affordable loop. Considering that, you know, Castle Town upgrades one of the things that give you just so much uh, money. And money's gonna be. Um, how good are you? You're not that great. I don't care about a Lord Paramount. We, we're in a really interesting situation where money's gonna be key because Valyria is gonna be a focus again. Because I don't see much point in conquesting um, these realms up here. Let's get you over there. To... Unless he's got it handled himself. And apparently she's gone to war. Race a local liege levies, give him a month and then attack into all the lands and take care of those. You'll be fine.
nearly lost, but that's because I went way too early. But we don't talk about it. Don't worry about it. Lord Vekar Pemorin has been a leal and able servant. Having successfully completed many tasks in aid of North Valyria. Uh, I could give him a favour. Some coin. I'll give him coin. He has been pretty loyal. He's, he's, he's lived a significant amount of time, too. Has to be said. Search for a smith, but I don't know what I would want built. I need a king's justice. Let's, let's appoint some positions. Uh, Neris would make a good court tutor. Chief Architect. Regal can have a go at that. Lena as a court poet. And I won't appoint a court just sir, because whoever I would appoint would hate me. Why is she my regent? What? Why are you my regent? Am I able to remove her as my regent? Because I have literally no clue who this woman is. What? So she's one of the ones who runs the Great Plaza. Why is she my regent? That's a bit annoying. We'll fix that. Overthrow the monarchy of North Valyria. Now, this is interesting. Overthrow the monarchy. What, force us into a republic? Who's leading this? Ah. Aren't you fun? What can I do to you? Nothing, really, but I can plot to kill you. What's my current plot doing? No one wants to join my plot, okay. Maybe we'll do better in a plot to kill him. No, actually, it's even worse odds. My goodness. I guess it's because he's in hiding. And let's upgrade... Uh, I don't know if upgrading Patropos would be wise. We should probably upgrade the basic defences in Tolos. Since that's what got destroyed by Dragonfire. Upgrade the estates. And then um, once you upgrade Mars Assist, obviously you can upgrade the Castle Town. So it's a very good loop to get working on these. Especially early on. The earlier on we get working on these, I think the better we're going to be. What I will say is I think we've accomplished a lot with our uh, stressed out ruler here. And we, we're we going to want a long rulership. We've kind of weakened North Illyria in a really bad way with this with our war to secure power. It's good we have secure power. Uh, oh, and Alix has come to age. We have a really good chance of holding power now and keeping things loyal, but it's going to be a lot of work to reach that point, and it's going to cost a lot of coin. I have an, an, an idea of two about how we're going to earn that coin, but with how much we have to repair as well, and how much we're going to have to do, there's going to be a lot of changes that we're going to have to make. But I think we have a chance to really push North Valyria to new heights under our new monarch. <laughs> So we shall leave it here for this episode. If you guys have suggestions about potential names for the Empire, please let me know. Maybe it should be the Illyrian Empire. Maybe the North Illyrian Empire you think is perfect, and we should keep this name until we've fully claimed Valyria. Maybe there's some ancient name for this region and this and this region, you know, better than Slaver's Bay. Or maybe we should call our name ourselves after Giscar. Who knows? Either way. I'm very excited for you guys to leave me your comments and let me know your thoughts. It's been, I'll let you know, a nightmare setting up this episode with how much I've had to do. I was hoping the war would be a bit, well, you know, we had the numbers advantage, but he had Quicksilver. And unfortunately, you just can't control the AI, so he just never used Quicksilver. He could have used Quicksilver, he just never did. And it was a bit annoying to me that he never did. I really wish he would have, because that would have been a really fun battle. And we honestly would probably lose. I did a test run. 
um, where we just lost basically in the first battle because of Quicksilver. And then I was like, we need to balance out the side here because Quicksilver is so strong. And yet we never ended up fighting Quicksilver, so that's a problem of its own right. Either way, that is where we shall call it for this episode, as I have a lot to do to fix North Valyria, and Valerian is going to need to meet with his council and decide how the hell is he going to balance the books and fix a shattered empire? Because they are reunited again, but only in name. And we'll have to find out what happens in the next episode. Until then. <laughs>